like to call the City of Richmond meeting to order this July 5th, 2017. If everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. The first item up for the is the approval of the agenda. You have a new packet on your dais with the yellow marks. That's the new items that were added. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, approval of the agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Item up is approval of meeting minutes from June seventh and June fifteenth, two thousand seventeen. Is there any questions or comments on the? Minutes. If there's a motion, we approve the minutes. I'll second this. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item four approval of the bills to be paid. Any questions on the bills? I just had one uh, in regards to what Schwindel had. It was in regards to. That's a reimbursement to Lions Park. Oh, okay. Yep. He okay. had done some work out there and they had paid, we paid him that way. Okay. Yep. With that, is there any other questions? Or look for a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Consent agenda for this evening, resolution 133-17, approval of June 2017 journal entries. Item B is resolution 134-17, acceptance of June 2017 donations. And those donations are Richmond Lions, reimbursement of park expense, which is about $7,000. And then they had another one for park, park improvements, with, uh, totaling about 4600 uh, $4, we have the State Bank of Richmond donating for the fitness stations at 250. Uh, a and W donating $200 towards the fitness stations that are going to be going in the park, and the State Bank of Richmond for music in the park for the band 45 RPM, which is going to be playing on July, July 11th <coughs> at the park. It's also the bank's appreciation night. Okay. Those are our donations. And then item C is acceptance of people services June 2000, uh, June report. That is our consent agenda. Any questions or comments? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda for this evening. I'll second that. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Just a one comment on that the money we spent on music in the park. It's really well spent. <laughs> that was a really good show. It really, really yeah. Was. So last week, yep. Last week was great. Yeah. Resolution 135-17, authorization for Minnesota's lawful per lawful gambling exempt permit for the Catholic United Financial Council at St. Peter and Paul School and Parish Center on August 27th. 2017 and the city is willing to waive the 30-day waiting period from when it received the permit um, the reason this is pulled out is because I have a I have a interest in it I'm the, I'm the signee for the for the fi Catholic financial so okay. needs to abstain. I need to abstain from it when we vote so okay. I am gonna ask for a roll call vote actually at first I, I guess we need a motion First. I'll make that motion to accept uh, resolution 13517. I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, we're going to do a roll call. Uh, Larry? Aye. Michael? Yeah, yeah, aye. Mike? Aye. Tim? Aye. And I will abstain. Okay. All right. At this time, we'll move on to our next item up, and it's, it's that time of year again. It's River Lake Days. Charlie and Tucker, do you want to come up and tell us about the excitement? Okay, well, we'd first of all like to welcome everybody at River Lake Days, which is next week. And we've got uh, oh, quite a lineup of, of events. Uh, brochures can be found uh, in the downtown business places and the ones along the highway. 
um, Summit, Cold Spring, St. Martin, kind of all over just uh, explaining the layout. Um, it starts out um, on Thursdays with an all-city garage sale, um, usually a very good good uh, traffic builder for the town. I mean, people are all over the place. Um, Officer Bloom, you'll have to kind of keep things in line because there's a lot of people around and they're all <laughs> stopping and looking and driving at the same time, but it's all, it's all a good thing. Um, that starts on Thursday and continues on Friday. Um, we have the local businesses have sidewalk sales downtown on Friday and Saturday. We've got a medallion hunt that starts on uh, Friday morning at 9 o'clock. Um, 2 o'clock on Friday we have a golf tournament and we also have a hole-in-one contest and Schweeters out of Cold Spring puts up a car. Um, so if you get a hole-in-one and if you buy a button, which is the, one of the requirements, um, you have the ability to win a car. Um, so good luck to all the golfers. Um, we have several food stands that you know that kind of start up around between three and five o'clock. We've got taco in a bag, uh, pork chop on a stick, uh, sponsored by the Richmond Firefighters Relief Association. Um, we've got slushies and ice cream, mini donuts. Um, the hamburger stand starts up. The beer garden starts up. So they all start somewhere between three and five o'clock on Friday. So good place to come for food, drink, a lot of good conversation. Um, for the kids, on, thir on Friday we have a large setting of inflatable games. Um, last year was the first year we did it, it was a big hit. So we've got that back again this year. Um, at four o'clock on Friday, the, the Keller Family Foundation sponsors a scavenger hunt. And Janet runs that and it's, it's always a lot of fun. She has pretty good participation with that. We've got also for the kids, we've got a speed throw game sponsored by Friends of the Library. Um, one of the bigger um, draws, I guess, in my mind on Friday night is the car show. And that is also sponsored by the Richmond Firefighters Relief Association. Um, what do we have, Charlie, last year? 80 cars? Yes, about? I believe that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, maybe bigger. Yeah, so it pretty much yeah fills up the street and uh, it, they're all kind of cool. I don't know if you like old cars, but they're really kind of neat to look at. Um, six o'clock on Friday we have the junior royalty pageant. This is um, based on all kindergarten graduates from last year or from this past school year and they crown a king and queen. It's just a little contest and there's a set of questions um, you know and it's just a, it's a different set of people in our town. Um, we've got gambling by the Richmond Lions Club, charitable gambling. Um, and then to close out the evening, of course, we have Laverne and Lucy. Now, we all don't know Laverne and Lucy, but I've watched them, and they're kind of a hoot. There are a couple of gals, and they sing, and they get a lot of um, crowd participation. And it's, it's a comedy show with a little music behind it. So um, I'm sure that it's going to be a, a very good show from what I've seen of it. Um, we got Bingo at 8, 8.30. And for this year, or for this year, there's a thousand dollars. Excuse me, I have to read it. Thousand dollars <laughs> worth of prizes. And to close out the evening, we have live music uh, by Levi Pelzer, the Levi Pelzer band. So we've got a nice lineup for Friday, and uh, I'll let Charlie take Saturday. On Saturday, they're going to start off bright and early at 6:30 in the morning. Registration for the uh, 10k, 5k, and the kids 1k uh, run, walk, run, and the actual event will start at 8 a.m. Uh, the, the garage sales are going on again on Saturday. Uh, the country store, sponsored by the St. Peter and Paul Church, uh, starts at 8 a.m. And they have some lunch stands and things up at the Parish Center, uh, along with the, uh, the uh, crafts, uh, arts and crafts. That all starts about 8, 9 o'clock up there at the, uh, the uh, church grounds. They have, they have other uh, pie and ice cream, book sales. There are all kinds of different uh, sales going on up, up at the school grounds. Then you get into the uh, middle of the morning around 10 o'clock and you start opening up all the food stands again, the mini donuts, the slushies and ice cream. Then, then we get into the kids' pedal tractor pull at about 10.30. There's registration with the contest starting at 11. Uh, another thing going on for the kids at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning is a kitty parade. There's going to be a kitty parade that goes up to the grounds up there. The Animal Expo starts at that time. 
So there were a lot of ch uh, little ch ch children's events at that time. And then we started getting into our hamburger stands. The inflatables start again at 11 o'clock. All the, the beer garden starts up at noon. Then again, we start in the afternoon. We have some more rides for the kids. We have the 40 and 80 club train ride sponsored by Style Insurance and uh, Dave Doles. Uh, then we have the horse and trailer rides that are River Lake Days Committee uh, sponsors. And then we have the Assembly of God train rides going on also at that time for the kids. Uh, there's a money hunt for the children going on at 1.30 in the afternoon. And then we're going to have a kind of a fan, to call a fantastic magic show with Jonah, a young gentleman from the River Life Church that does magic tricks and things with the kids. So that's going to be going on in the middle of the afternoon for the kids. Uh, we have the medallion hunt going, uh, the other clues go on, and the, the scavenger hunt is still going on at that time if it hasn't been um, uh, found. Um, then 4 o'clock, the, all the other food stands, brought and hot dogs open up. Then we have 5 o'clock, we have the mass, they have the uh, po polka mass, yep, outdoor. the outdoor polka mass. Uh, charitable gambling starts at 6 o'clock, and then at 7 p.m. is our big grand parade. Parade starts at the Richmond Royals baseball diamond. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go down the, through, all the way down through uh, Main Street and back up to the diamond. Then, then after that parade is over, then we're going to have diamond back. The live music this year is diamond back from 8.30 to 12.30. And then when at, we call it dusk, when it's dark enough, the fireworks go off. So that will end uh, Saturday evening with the fireworks and the live music. And then can't forget on Sunday morning, the uh, Catholic United Financial Breakfast they'll have up at the school from 8.30 to 12 o'clock. And, and then anyone's welcome after that to come and help take everything down and put it away. <laughs> we'll give you a little welcome to you for that. <laughs> if, I, if I could just make a comment generally about River Lake Days. Um, you know, it, it's really kind of a huge fundraising event for a lot of nonprofit organizations in the town. And, you know, we welcome you to come out and support those groups, uh, you know, by buying a, whatever they're selling. And, of course, you know, to buy a button or a shirt, you know, those are all things that support us so we can have the, the bands and the fireworks and the entertainment. You know, that button pays for, for all of those items. So it's very important that, you know, um, everybody gets out and, and pitches in a little bit if they can. So um, River Lake Days is not run necessarily by Charlie and I. I mean, it's a large group of people that, that it's spread out over and, you know, we just want to take the time to say thank you to um, all those people that do help us out. So, right. see you next weekend. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> On that note, um, with River Lake Days comes, obviously there's always some issues that come up, not necessarily from River Lake Days, but being we're in the theme of River Lake Days, um, this past week we received a bunch of complaints about different properties here in the city of Richmond and one of the issues with those complaints nobody signs their names on them so technically according to our policy we do not acknowledge those complaints because they are not signed and for those who write the complaints I mean we we won't act upon them unless you sign them and according to Minnesota State Statute 13 they're all confidential so any any complaint you make and put in the box here, the only person that's gonna read it is Tessa, the administrator, and she doesn't tell me or any of the council members or even the police department who makes the complaint. It's only brought up the complaint of what it is. So if you want to make a complaint, we accept every complaint. We try to do, we try to fix things that are going wrong in the city, but without signing your name to them, it's kind of hard to act upon them because we have to follow our set of rules as well. So I'm just letting you know, I'm not, not necessarily from River Lake days, but, and for everybody out there, if, you know, being this coming week is going to be our, our showcase of Richmond, being that it's River Lake days, you know, please clean up your lot and maybe offer to help your neighbor if, if they can't do their own lot. You know, it's the one time of year that we have a lot of people come to town. So, and everybody be safe. So with that said, we'll move on to our next item. And tonight it's uh, Dave Bromo, our engineer. All right, good evening, everyone. Got a uh, couple items for you this evening. 
Um, Tessa, how do you want to handle the first one? You want me to just uh, give an overview of what's going on with Barry Loop and uh, the extension over there? You can go right ahead and go with that. You're not going to be hurt by that? Okay. No. Um, so we've had a request that a, uh, an individual would like to build on the northern portion of Barry Loop and Rich River Estates. Uh, be right about here. Like to build a home on those platted three lots, or they weren't platted as three lots, it's platted as one out lot. They'd like to build a, a home out there, and certainly we'll welcome anybody that's really willing to build a home. But a portion of that is we need to extend that roadway. It's a developer cost, the developer is aware of that cost. Um, in your packet this evening, I have an estimate for you guys. When you're smaller, well, that's a city cost, and then the rest of it will be borne by the developer. The city cost is to extend sewer and water to Nature Park. If they're going to pave the road, it's time to do that because we don't want to certainly pay for it after the fact. So, um, so that's just city cost of those service lines uh, to be put in there. The rest is covered by the developer. Uh, pretty much they're going to install that roadway as it was planned back in 2006. And to make our permits good that we had then, that's what they need to do. So we're kind of we're kind of locked in out there. So it'll be a 32-foot uh, wide street, I believe. Yep, 32-foot wide street. And it'll end at Nature Park and go into our parking lot there. Storm sewer, curb and gutter, just like the rest of the development. So I don't know what kind of action you need on this one, Tessa. Questions from me? Um, I guess we just need to make sure that um, the city is okay with spending this kind of money, the 9500 on our own work that we had approved to do. Um, we did talk that there's going to be about roughly $1,600 in surveying yep. and everything of that lot we are going to be purchasing, or that portion of the lot we'll purchase for Nature Park. Yep. Um, I am still waiting for the developer to say yay or nay on these numbers. Um, in the developer's agreement, he does get the option um, to say yes or no if he wants to go through our contractors or if he wants to get his own, but it still has to be at city standards and, re and reviewed and everything. So I'm still in the waiting game of that. I met with them last week to give them these numbers and I haven't heard from them quite yet. So with the holiday and stuff, it might be a little delayed, but. Staff and I came up with a, an approach here to reduce a little bit in cost some of the sanitary sewer and water improvements because they're not putting in as, as many lots as they were. Mm -hmm. We're able to go to a clean out now instead of a manhole, uh, shorten up some water main extension. So, you know, we think we did right by the, the developer to s square things up out there and still a, a good system we can maintain, which was my concern. Yep. So I think we kind of hit the middle of the road here. Yes. So on our part, we're virtually going to wait for the developer to correct, give the go ahead. Yep, and if they ask us to get quotes and secure it, then he'll pay this. He'll reimburse the city for those improvements, which is how Rich River Village was done in the first place. City did it was a city bid project, reimbursed by the developer. Or if he chooses to get quotes himself and, and just make it happen, as long as it's to the standards I have in the exhibit you guys have, we're in good shape. So. Mm -hmm. True. But yeah, I guess the city cost is just the big thing as far as if we want them, if we're okay with that amount. Would that be something that would be taken out of reserves? We have, to, yeah. To make up, being that we haven't planned for it. Yeah. And the other thing is, is I know we at our workshop we talked about potentially um, delaying the tarring part of that just because it's not also not budgeted this year to see if the developer would be willing to wait to tar that area until next spring. Well, so. so you're so was your bid with tarring or not, or was that just the... So that's just paving for the roadway itself. I did not include the parking lot estimate mm -hmm. in this. Okay. So, yeah, that would not So his, his amount may even go down since we're not going to be tarring this. Certainly, and, and quite honestly, I put in some fairly generous cost here because they're such small quantities. Mm -hmm. If somebody's got an extra stick of pipe laying around, he might save quite a bit based on this estimate. But if we were to go bid it out with all brand new materials and people having to go buy them, the costs go up pretty high when you're talking small quantities like this. So so hopefully we can do better than this for them, but I, I kind of like to let them know what the worst case scenario is. Well, I think at our last council meeting, we kind of said we were willing to go ahead with the project. I would think that we'd want to continue at least so you can keep going forward with the developer and you know that either way, it's still going to be the city's cost if we do it now or do it next year. So. I guess I'd look for a motion for the councils stating that we'd be willing to move forward if, if that's what we choose. I'll make a motion to move forward on the very extension. I'll second that. Is there any other discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And that's move forward with the water and sewer yep. but not tarring? 
we'll just moving forward with the project for now and yeah. we can always come back if we want to tire the parking lot we can always talk about that later and we will have other improvements if such time you know in 2019 we decide hey we got a paving crew in town maybe now is the time we'll have options okay. yeah. so speaking of 2019 project we're finally into the poise so where we uh, it starts costing us money at this point um, to this point it's been talking about it and, and doing little concept drawings but now we're into the actual prepara preparation of engineering documents for USDA rural development I think that's going to be our funder of choice out here on this project they did our 2008 project, Central Avenue Southside project. They're a good funder to have. They're a little rigid. Their engineering report that they require is, let's say, a substantial to say the least. Uh, we spent, uh, I think, $52,000 on the one that we wrote in 2006, and that didn't include storm sewer. So we're up to 60000 this year, including storm sewer in that funding package. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty hefty report. I think it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to 500 pages. Um, you're not going to want to read it. It's going to be terrible. Uh, well, I'll tell you that right now, but um, it's it's a good funding program. We'll also submit that to MPCA as a facility plan, and just explore all of our funding options with it. It's it's a pretty versatile document, and it really gets us in the door with state and federal funders. <coughs> so, to move forward with the, trying to get funding for the project, it's really a, it's our best avenue, and that's steps we have to take to get going. So, questions on that? Uh, like I said, I'll certainly go through it. I can bring you the 2006 one if you're interested. But uh, it's uh, it's extensive to say the least. I would say we get probably a thirty percent design out of it in order to satisfy the requirements, which is way more than we usually do for a feasibility study. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so you're looking for us to to give the nod to go ahead and give the moving? nod to go ahead and keep things moving, yeah. And spend sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand is what it will be. Now that isn't all going to happen now. No. It'll be over the next year and a half. Yeah. So it's and not going to spend this year. Some will be sent this year, starting almost immediately. Quite honestly, I'll have people yeah. starting to work on it, myself included, That's almost immediately. On the street's fine. On the street's fine. Okay. And, and this is 100% reimbursable by USDA when the funding package comes back. So the city will not be paying this exclusively when we get our funding package. It'll be loan and grant eligible in the percentage that we'll get. Yep. So it's it's. So we can be reimbursed. It's something up front, but yes, you'll be reimbursed for it. We just start making our list of our expended our expenses for the project, and yep. so then when we do start getting the money, we can reimburse ourselves with the eligible funds. Right. I make a motion we can we would continue on with the what we're doing here and go with it. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Anything else for me this evening? Any, uh... Not at the moment. Very good. Keep, keep moving us forward. Yeah. Thanks, we'll do. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. All right, moving on to item nine, uh, St. Martin. I had a few residents from St. Martin that have talked to me about making sure that we stay in time with St. Martin, that we're still willing to do a sewer if, if they're willing to come this way. And I told them we put it on the agenda and talk about it that either Tessa or myself or if another council member wants to go with and we go back up there and offer our services again just to keep reminding them that we're still here and we're still willing to if St. Martin they are finishing up their water right now and they will be starting working on their sewer here shortly on what they're going to do for sure so more or less just trying to make sure they understand that we're still willing to do something if if that presents itself I wouldn't mind going along with that Sorry. I'd be interested also if it if it. Uh, we just gotta be careful need. of the quorum. Okay. Well, I just mean if I, I would like to see us go up there and yep. at least right. show well, interest if that if we're. If Larry can't make it, then I can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we'll want to be careful of a quorum, especially attending a meeting like that. Okay. Sure. No so. problem. You know, and maybe maybe sometime we have to set up that the whole council goes up there and you know that to show that we are willing to provide services that way. And I mean, we'll, and not just sewer. I mean, it could be right. other services as well. I mean, I know Tessa went up there and said, you know, we, we could sweep for streets and stuff too if they need to because they don't own those equipment, mm -hmm. you know, and we do have them, so. Yeah. Yeah. I if just wanted to. If that's something you guys want to do as a whole, well, you have to let me know so that we can at least post for quorum then. Let us know on date wise and stuff. Yeah. 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 When, they, when you find out, of course. Yeah. If they would have a, a pre-meeting or something, if you and Larry would well, go if you would, yeah. you want to, yeah, Unless if the whole council feel. wanted to go and you just went to one of their council okay. meetings, but. We'll have to at least um, post for a quorum then if that's something you guys want to do. Okay. 
I just want to show them that we're still interested. I mean, we still have the plant there and would love to have their services come this way. So, all right. At this time, we'll move on to department reports. The Chief of Police, Jason Blue. Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, first off, just a review for the months of February and March. Um, in the month of February, City of Richmond had 106 total incidents, uh, be with four medical emergencies, two suspicious activities, um, 63 traffic stops, which included 68 warnings and six cita or 16 cit citations, um, two narcotics contacts, and then 37 miscellaneous calls for police services. Um, in the month of March for Richmond, um, we had 84 total incidents, two medical emergencies, three suspicious vehicles, um, 61 traffic stops with 63 warnings and only 14 citations, three narcotics contacts and 18 miscellaneous calls for um, police related incidents. Um, one thing that I'd be asking for approval from you guys, uh, we plan on having a mock crash like we've done in the past um, on August 17th. Um, one thing we have to do is close down the intersection of Central Avenue and 2nd Street North. Um, just for the spectators and setting everything up. So that I would need approval from you guys for it. It'd probably be from about 4 p.m. to about 9 p.m. that evening by the time we get everything cleaned up again. And that's by the elementary school? Yep, that's, yep, between the, the church the and the elementary school kind of on that area there. It kind of works nice to put seating up in the parking lot and everything. So right. it works it works out pretty good. And it's got the park right there for the little kids to keep them entertained before it starts. So. Sure. <laughs> Same location that was two years ago and yes. we're in the same lot car crash. Do you want to request now? Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, request uh, on August 17th to close the intersection of uh, 2nd Street North and Central Avenue between 4 and 9 o'clock for a mock crash event. You're I'll approving say. to close it. What's that? You're approving to close it, not requesting to yeah, close it, right? Yeah, approving to close it. Okay. Close it. I'll second that. Sorry. Any no, other discussion? Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Excellent, thank you. And with that, um, food is being donated, I believe, and that'll start at 6 p.m., and the mock crash will actually itself will start at 7 p.m., so anybody that wants to attend, and we'll try and get some more advertising out there, and hopefully we get a good turnout. We've got a number of, I'd list all the departments off that are going to be assisting, but I'd forget somebody, so I'm just going to say there's a lot of departments involved. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it hopefully it's a good turnout. Um, Next, currently we're going through, um, we're having a full-time position that we're ho well, <coughs> hopefully promoting one of the part-time guys to a full-time position. And we're also going through a uh, hiring process for um, a part-time position, which is externally posted. And the contract that you guys have with the city is, um, you can have a representative from the council. Um, the last interviews we did, it was um, Tessa, Bridget, and myself sat on the board. But I'm putting it out there. If one of you wanted to be involved, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then we can go from there. Or if you wanted it to just be us three again, that's fine too. So I'm, I'm willing to accommodate either way. Um, <coughs> right now they'd be posted until, the internal one is posted until the 14th of this month. The external one is posted until the 28th of this month. And then we would anticipate interviews um, the first week or so of August. We don't have an exact date set yet. It's more or less of getting everybody's schedules together and picking a day. We will talk about it at our July workshop. Okay, and that works. We'll decide from there. I know I've sat on that. I've, I believe I've Mike sat has sat on it too before. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about it and see what the group feels we should do. That works. Um, also, National Night Out is August 1st. I know Eric's been meeting with uh, Steve, the fire chief, um, to set up someplace in town. I know they had a meeting today, and I don't know exactly where that meeting ended up. So, but if anybody else is in, interested in hosting one for their neighborhood, um, contact the police department, and we can set something up for um, a National Night Out in their neighborhood. And then also, I'd like to thank everybody that came out for the bike rodeo. It was a really good turnout. Um, had a lot of kids that came in um, and it actually went really well I think everybody had a lot of fun so and it was great for it was a nice nice night for the mu music in the park too so everything nice. turned out well I think very nice so that's all I have if you guys have questions for me is the one no you're gonna try to do it by get by the uh, arena again though you're gonna try to do that uh, national night out 
Are you looking at going back there? Um, we've been discussing that both ways. Um, if we use the pavilion down there, or if there is somebody that wants to do it in a neighborhood, we can set it up in their neighborhood. Um, just kind of seeing if there's anybody that wants to volunteer or anything like that. So I think they're kind of looking at all the options right now. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to Planning Commission. Obviously, you had no meeting last month. Uh, we'll go to the EDA. Or do you have something, Tim, for planning? Uh, you didn't have a meeting. We're going to have our next meeting. We haven't discussed it on that. If we are going to have one at the end of this month, I don't believe. At the 27th. 27th, if. Yep, if we have agenda items. If, okay. Yep. It'll be 27th then. Okay. Right. Yep. Then we'll move on to EDA. Mike? Okay. Uh, well, we had our last meeting on June 27th. And we're still looking into the uh, working on filling empty businesses or assisting people to have businesses for sale in the empty lots. Um, right now, we're looking at possibly re or we're going to revisit the BRE program that we um, had done a couple of years ago, I believe, is when we had that, and kind of look back into that and see if there's any specific businesses that people were looking at or, or targeting that. The city would have, or even general businesses that that uh, that that we're looking at possibly getting for Richmond and probably try to fill some of these empty businesses. So from there, we're just going to go from there, right there, and see where that takes us. So, and if anybody's wish, any business people would wish to address the EDA at a meeting, um, I encourage you to come in if you have questions or anything to come in, but set up an appointment, get on the agenda. And come and visit with us, ask questions if, if there's anything that you have. Uh, our next meeting will be July 25th at 6.30. And that's at City Hall here? That's City Hall. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to Recorey Trail. Tim? Recorey Trail, we met on June 15th. Um, basically, the, the only, we, we kind of gave an update on the uh, finishing up the uh, the last half from uh, west of Rockville and that's been completed some of the fencing has been done uh, I know they're done some of the uh, uh, grading and trying to seed it I know they're trying to finish some of that up as well um, so we kind of finished that up looked through the uh, took care of a few of the bills that uh, were coming out of the end of it but uh, the main thing is we're going to start working on some of the bonding for that second uh, second phase that's going to run from Keys uh, gas station there to the where it currently ends right now in, in uh, west of Rockville, or so. And our next meeting is July 13th in Rockville at nine o'clock. Right. Questions? Thanks, Tim. Uh, we'll move on to other matters of concern for this evening. Uh, item A is uh, the Richmond Fire Relief Association is asking for their yearly donation that's on the back of your council packet. Um, it's more of a formality of something they've had since, I believe, a while. So I guess you're looking for, a, uh, I imagine, a uh, motion to approve to give the donation of, it's 1% of what the budget is, or of the tax capacity. I this is something we've done, that 1%, is that pretty, that's pretty standard? Yeah. Yeah, it's budgeted too, right. so okay. yeah. Yeah, I assumed it was, but I thought I'd ask. Yep. So I guess I'm looking for a motion at this time. Well, I'll make a motion that we accept that as uh, in the past, so that's fine. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will abstain. Um, item B, people services increase as of September 1st, 2017. Uh, this is part of our contract. It's in, in writing. It's it, It'll go up 1.9%, which is about $400. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our written agreement. This is more of a FYI, just to let you know that this is coming as of September 1. Um, the next item up is our next council meeting will be July 20th at 6.30 p.m. here at City Hall. And other than that, does anybody else have anything to add? There was a discussion, uh, someone who lives in Richmond here, that asked me about a food shelf uh, building and if we'd be interested in purchasing property, which I won't 
mention the property now because not I don't, I've talked to pretty much individually different people on the council and I I know it's something that they have in Cold Spring now and uh, I think that was kind of you know the proximity I think was something we why don't we bring it up as one of our items for our workshop and let's do some feasibility of you know the biggest thing is is somebody to run it somebody to run it and operate it if if we can get an organization or something to do it no, i don't think it's something, something the city something wants we, to do but we can are we now. are we not also um of the three cities involved with the one in cold spring i thought that is considered to be that instead of having individual ones for rockville richmond and cold spring i, was I thought we were all part of that if i'm not mistaken if that's true Isn't it recorded? No, or, yes, i thought it was called the recorey food shelf right other than just the cold spring food shelf i mean maybe i'm mistaken too larry but well, yeah, I, I mean i i thought that's what it was at one time i know so. people from, from richmond go there sure I mean, you know, sure but, you know. Well, well, we'll look into it for our next workshop. Absolutely. We'll go from there. Yeah, it's been brought up to me. I want to make sure we didn't yep. talk about it. Okay. All right. Anything else for this evening? Otherwise, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>